Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for Texas Essential Knowledge and Skill 8.9c. This is for topographic maps and satellite views. For this TEEK, it is your job to interpret topographic maps and satellite views to identify land and erosional features and predict how these features may be reshaped by weathering. It's important that you understand how you're going to get credit for this reteach. Make sure you're using the Cornell Note worksheet from your teacher while you watch this video. Take notes, answer the questions, and don't forget to write your summary at the end. Show your completed Cornell Note worksheet to your teacher. They will then give you information about your next opportunity to retest. There's a little bit of prior knowledge and vocabulary you really need to make sure you remember before we go any further. First off, let's start with weathering. Weathering is the process by which water, wind, or ice wear down rocks and other exposed surfaces. This could include chemical weathering or mechanical weathering. The important thing to remember here is weathering is actually breaking things up. It's actually making them smaller. And then erosion is the actual moving of that weathered material or sediment from one location to another. When we're talking about erosional features, these are some of the common items that we'll be talking about that you would see on the surface of the earth. We'd be looking at things like canyons, deltas, and when you're thinking of deltas, if you haven't studied this very much, it's when a river empties out into a sea or an ocean, and as the deposits get dropped off and all that sediment gets left behind, it kind of fans out in this triangle shape. We've got mountains, rivers, and islands. All these are classic examples and really easy to use if we're looking for erosional features. When thinking about topographic maps, you don't need to know how to make a topographic map, you just need to know how to read one so you can interpret the topographic map. If you start off with some terminology here, we've got the index contour. These are the darker contour lines. And that's usually every fifth line on a topographic map. Now, what's the contour line tell you anyway? The secret to that is it's all about the elevation. So if this was a mountain or a hill that I was climbing up, and I want to look at that on a flat piece of paper map, that's my topographic map. So if I'm walking up this hill, and if I'm right here, right on top of this 100, which would be right about here on the real mountain. If I'm standing there, that 100 means that that is my elevation above sea level. So I would be 100 feet or 100 meters, depending on the key, above sea level. Now, if you notice, most of the contour lines don't have a number on them. So at that point, I got to do a little bit of work to figure out if I was standing on a certain line, if I was at that contour line, what would my elevation be? And that's where it helps to figure out the contour interval. Kind of like in math class, interval is just how much do I need to count by to figure out where I'm at. I'll give you an example. If we were standing at 100, we see another index contour line that doesn't have a number at all, and then the next index contour line is 200. So simple math will tell me this has to be 150. But I still don't know what these little thin lines for in my index lines are for those contour lines. It's like, what's my elevation? How high up am I? Well, if I know this is 150 and this is 100, let's just try some numbers. Um, I'm going to guess that each contour line is 20 higher. So let's try it. We got 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. Nope, that's too much. I was counting too fast. That should be 150 there, not 200. Uh, let's try 10. 100, 110, 120. 130, 140, 150. That's it. So my contour interval for this particular map is 10. Every single contour line is 10 additional feet of elevation that I go up. Looking at sample questions for topographic maps. Once again, if you notice, we're not making the map, we just need to interpret it and do some readings. So if you look on your note sheet, you'll see question one. If you were a hiker that was standing on point X, what would be your current elevation? So point X is right over here. It's your job to figure out what the elevation would be. Go ahead and grid in your answer and make sure you bubble in correctly. Question two, 
if you were a hiker that was standing on point Y, what would be your current elevation? On that one, you're going to have to use the contour interval to figure this out. For question three, it has been raining for eight days in a row on top of point Y. This starts a stream of water that is eroding away the hill. Towards which color of dot will the material be deposited? For your answer on this one, just mention the color that is correct. Question four is a multiple choice question. Walking from point X to the green dot would be either answer A, a downhill walk, answer B, an uphill walk, or answer C, a walk where you would stay at the same elevation the entire time. All right, let's move on to satellite views. For satellite views, here we've got an example of a star question used in past years. On these questions, it very rarely will ever ask you to actually say, what am I looking at? So you can use Google Maps and things like that to get the pictures, but really it's our job to think about weathering and erosion and what it might look like in the future. So it's probably going to be a short story problem. This problem states, the satellite photograph below shows a large meteorite crater that is 1,200 meters in diameter and 170 meters deep. This crater is located in a flat, arid part of northeastern Arizona. Now it's our job to think about how will this crater most likely change over time. Now we didn't get a lot of information, but some key words they threw in there was basically that this is an arid part of northeastern Arizona. Arid meaning we're not getting rain there. This is a very, very dry area. So we look at our answer choices to pick from. Let me help you get two, rid of two of the worst ones. Answer F says it'll get deeper as it fills with water. Once again, this is a bad answer because we're in an arid part of northeastern Arizona. We're not going to get water out there. The next answer that's really bad is answer J. It widens as it fills with lava. Right, this is a terrible answer because it doesn't say anything about this being anywhere near a volcano. So I'll leave you with two choices to pick from. Think about what makes the most sense for this environment. Question six is the last question we'll look at. And once again, this was another question that was used just recently in the last couple years on the star test. And on this one, it says sand is sometimes removed from the ship channel through a process called dredging to make it easier for ships to travel through. Recently, sand from the bottom of the channel was moved to area beaches. Without this transfer of sand, what would most likely occur in this area in the future? All right, there's a lot of things in this question that make this a little complicated. One of the big problems is dredging. Dredging is not something we're required to teach you in the state of Texas. So we just kind of have to make sure we understand what's happening. So we've got a ship channel. We know ships want to come through here. So what dredging is really doing is it's kind of like a big shovel scoop that's going down to the bottom of the ocean floor and it's grabbing a whole big scoop of sand and it's basically pulling it out of there or like a vacuum sucking it out of there and then taking that sand to the beaches. So we're making the ship channel deeper by doing that. And then we're making the beaches bigger by dropping off extra sand. So the question says, without this transfer of sand. So in other words, if we stop doing that, what makes the most sense? And we think about it like that, this question becomes a whole lot easier. So look at your answer choices and pick the best one. When you're done with that, don't forget to write your summary and then you'll be finished for this digital reteach.